Joker 2, Folio 2, is absolutely panned. Everybody hates it. And I'm going to make a bit of a defense for it. And I think that part of the reason that people hate it is because, spoilers by the way, is because of the plot. Yep. Okay? Now, the plot effectively, ha- there are two plots running at the same time. There's the more obvious, tangible, real ones, which are the love story with Harley Quinn and the courtroom drama and what are the consequences of the first film. Now, that plot of love story, courtroom drama was very unsatisfying, very boring, didn't go anywhere and really right in the forefront of everything. And so by the end, you feel absolutely fucking miserable. But... I don't think that that's really the way to look at these films. And I think that the the better way to look at it, and I said this earlier, was Joker 1 is a question of what would it take to make a human being become Joker? Mm -hmm. The second one is what are the consequences of that? But not legally and not in terms of a love story, but in terms of what it would do to that human being. It's been a character exploration since the start. It's still a character exploration. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that Todd Phillips made a mistake here because it should have been more clear this yes he had the expositional beginning that explained it but it still didn't feel like it throughout it you still felt like i'm watching a really bad courtroom drama a really bad love story but really if you take a story as beginning middle and end where there's a conflict and a resolution the conflict that really was actually very entertaining and the thing that i really enjoyed was After the events that turn a human being, Arthur Fleck, into Joker, what would that take? Well, it would take a miserable fucking life with nobody who loves him and his medicine gets pulled and he loses his job and it just, the list goes on and on and on. He breaks, he becomes Joker. Joker number two, the conflict is if you now introduced a little bit of love for Arthur Fleck, what would happen? Would he become the Joker still, or would he become Arthur Fleck if that love was conditional of the fact that he was Joker? So Harley Quinn turns up, she shows him a bit of love, and suddenly he is tormented, and he is in this position where she only loves him because he is Joker. He finally feels a little bit of acceptance, which is all he's ever needed. Now he's starting to become human again, and the whole conflict is, do I be this human being, Arthur Fleck, who feels... this horrible pain of being a human being and feeling the remorse of the actions that I've taken? Or do I settle into this warm, comfortable, happy masquerade of being a joker? Mm. Now, the actual plot is shown in the colour of the film. Todd Phillips does have a very good command of colour and he's very intentional with it. Specifically, there are two colours which are really, really common in cinema, teal and orange. They're on opposite sides of the colour wheel, blue and orange. Really, really common because they're really, really beautiful. And they are beautiful because we see them in nature all the time. Mm. Okay, it's warm and cold. It's the sky. It's fire. It's it's around us constantly. And okay. so a lot of films use it. And if the film is following the conflict inside Arthur's head and inside his heart of, do I be this joker and slip into almost like an addiction, like having that hit of my addiction where I'm happy and I'm safe and I'm warm? Or do I accept the cold, hard reality of being a human being and taking the consequences of my actions, both emotionally and realistically? That is shown through the use of teal and orange. There are scenes where he is subdued and miserable and he is Arthur Fleck and you see tons and tons of blues it's very cold and dark and it's painful and it's real and then there are scenes where Lee will set fire to a piano Mm. and the room is blue and they have this connection where he's like becoming Joker and whilst this is happening the room she walks over to him her side of the room is orange his side of the room is blue as they get closer the room gets more and more orange until it finishes with orange Mm. and then he is the joker this happens time and time and time again throughout the movie there is a scene where he's out wailing in the wind uh, in the rain it's shown in the trailer he's like chained up and he's laughing but he's wailing it's incredible and it's very very blue it's very very teal Mm. and i think that yes this was not a good film right but the colors that he used when you look out for it take you through the real journey that i think is actually rewarding and enjoyable about this movie which is what the hell would this human being who did what he did in the first film what would he do if the very thing that made him the person this evil joker 
the lack of love, he now gets some love, but yeah. only on the condition that he is Joker. And every time that he is doing a balancing act between the two, every time he's swapping, we will show that with color. And I thought it was really beautiful and impressive. And it, because I was looking out for it, it took me on a journey that I think this film is completely unfairly critiqued. And that is one element that I really appreciated. He did a similar thing with Joker 1, I believe, like the way you're supposed to understand. He left clues as to which scenes were real and which weren't. Right. Yeah. Okay. So a really interesting example It's off topic, but quite interesting that I read about is in, on the surface in Joker 1, he was adopted, Arthur Fleck, by Penny. And Penny was delusional and thought that she was having an affair with Mr. Wayne. Yes. In Thomas Wayne, that's it. In reality, there are subtle clues that that wasn't the case. So it they lead us to believe that she was delusional, but he left clues that they actually did have an affair and he is really Thomas Wayne's son. Right. So the two clues, one, that they've been spotted, there may be more, and I read this on her on her post. One is that she, when she's talking to him, when he realises that he's Thomas Wayne's son, he does it because he reads a letter that she's sending to Thomas Wayne, and it's saying, like, your son needs you, he's a, he's a good boy, blah, blah, blah. And when he confronts her about it, she's locked in the bathroom, hiding from him, and she says something like, they made me sign some papers... At the time, you think that's non-disclosure agreements. But in reality, it turns out they said she adopted you. So if they were adoption papers and she's going, they made me sign some papers. Uh, the idea is that he made her cover it up by saying this is adoption papers. There is also a scene when he's full Joker near the end, just before he's about to go on his, ty you know, his um, tirade Kill Murray. He looks at a photo of her and he's kind of in the... He may have just killed his second his, his victim um, with puddles there in a very flamboyant mood. Theatrical. Yeah, it's, it's, it's seen as kind of a B-roll footage just leading up to his dance down the stairs. He turns over the picture of his mother and it says something like, I always loved your smile, T.W., what? Yeah. Okay. And we and and then the question is: so is that one of his unreliable na narrator portions? Yes. And the idea is it's not because in his unreliable narrator portions, I think nothing bad happens to him. Right. Okay. Only good things happen to him. Okay. Whereas bad things happen in the other one, and yeah, it's okay. literally just after or just before he kills a guy. So it's suspected that that isn't him making it up, but that's actually a, a real legitimate. Clue, God, so yeah. So Todd Phillips has been known to do this in the first one. It's interesting. He used color. I don't know if he used color in the first one. I, I do remember it being very vivid when he was in the dreamlike sequences. It does seem to be a bit more vibrant in my mind, but I might just be Mandela affecting. <laughs> For sure. But. It does actually lend itself to the point that we did make at the start where they've gone for something artistic here. The plot is a shambles. It's a yeah. mess. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that we didn't like. At the core <laughs> of it. Yeah, just... <laughs> but one thing that we both really respected is that they went for something that seemingly people find to have been self-indulgent. But for me, certainly, I was like... They've really, they've really tried to push the boat out to make something that is separate and could be viewed as better than the first one. And they've probably failed in most people's <laughs> estimations. <laughs> but we're talking into it and thinking, the colour thing's really cool. That, that is, that's cool. It was well done. Yes, the piece of art sucked, but there was <laughs> skill and yeah. there was brave boldness in making yeah. it the way that he made it. And yeah... It wasn't very enjoyable to sit through, but it, it wasn't devoid of any skill, any talent, any love, any artistry. We've well, enjoyed that. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Thank you for uh, tuning in and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.